Okay, here's another physics problem for you. Good practice, uh, not too terribly complicated. I have a block. It's a three kilogram block and it's supported by two strings. One of them is pulling this way horizontally and the other one's pulling at a 31 degree angle. And I wanna find the tension of both these strings. You may say, hey, wait, that's not enough information, but it is enough information and we're gonna do it. I'm gonna start off over here with a force diagram. So I'm gonna start with a dot and then I'm gonna draw all the forces acting on the block. So it's easy to think about this in terms of two types of forces, long range forces and forces that are contact forces. So what's the long range force? It doesn't have to touch this block. And that's the interaction between the block and the earth. We call that the gravitational force. It'd be downward with the gravitational force mg, where g is the vector zero, negative 9.8, zero newtons per kilogram. And m is the mass. Now the other forces acting on the block are from touching. Now strings have this unique property. Here's a string in that they can only pull in the direction of the string. They can't push, they can't pull. If they, if you try to pull in a different angle, the string changes. So right here, I know this string, I'll call that T1, uh, is pulling to the right. Uh, I, I call it T1. And I know this one's pulling up like that, T2. And I know this angle is 31. Let's just call that theta for now. I'll plug in the value later. The other thing I know is that if this block is just hanging there, the, to the, the change of momentum is zero. So F net equals zero. The zero vector, right? If I have F net as a vector, zero has to be a vector. And it is, just so you know, zero vector equals zero, zero, zero newtons. So what are the net forces? Let's just do this as a vector problem. I just have zero equals T2 plus T1 plus mg. And you may say, but whoa, 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 mg is negative. No, mg is not negative. g has a negative y component, but I'm adding up the vectors. Okay. Now, um, I do know something about t1, right? Since it's only in the x direction, I can write t1 as the vector t1, 0, zero. It's in T in the X direction and the Y component is zero and the Z component is zero. Uh, T2 I can write as this. So this is going to be the Y component and this is going to be the X component. So if this has a magnitude T2 then this X component is going to be equal to negative T2 cosine theta, right? Because this is the adjacent side. So that'd be cosine theta gives adjacent over hypotenuse. That hypotenuse is T2. The Y component is going to be right here. That's the opposite side. So that's going to be, notice I put the negative sign there because it's pushing in the negative X direction. So you have to include that. So this is going to be T2 sine theta zero. So now let's just add up all this, add up these vectors. So I have T I put T2 first, I'm not sure why. So negative T2 cosine theta, T2 sine theta, zero, plus T1, zero, zero, plus zero, negative MG, zero. I, I brought the M in, right? That's fine. Equals zero. So from that, I can look right here. The X components have to all add up. So let's just add up the x components. I get negative t2 cosine theta plus t1 equals zero. And the y components have to add up. So I have t2 sine theta minus mg equals zero. So right here, I know everything in this equation except for t2. So if I take this equation and add mg to both sides, I get t2 sine theta equals mg. Now I can divide both sides by sine theta and I get T2 equals mg over sine theta. So I can get that as a value. T2 equals m, which is three. G, I'm just not putting the units in. 9.8 is g, not negative 9.8, right? I've already taken into account the negative right there. And over sine of 31. So let's put that in our calculator and we'll get the magnitude of T2. Drop. 3, enter, 9.8 times 31. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode, sine, divided by. And I get 
57.1 newtons. That's the magnitude. Uh, now I can go over here and solve for T1. T1, if I add this to both sides, is going to be T2 cosine theta. So T1 is going to be T2, 57.1, times cosine of 31. So let's put that in here. So actually, I have that right there. There's T1, and then that's to 31 cosine times equals 48.9 newtons. So now if I want to write these as full on vectors, I could say T1 vector is just going to be this, 48.900 newtons. And if you, you've got to put a box around it. It's not a final answer if you don't put a box around it. T2 equals, okay, now I'm going to go ahead and get this value, the T2 cosine theta, which I already did. So that's going to be negative 48.9. Now I need T2 sine theta to get that. So I could just, it's just going to be uh, 3 times 9.8, which I didn't have to do that. 3, enter 9.8 times. So 29.4. Zero newtons, and I put a box around it because it's the final answer, and that's how you get final answers. You put boxes around them, and there you go. That's your answer to the whole problem. Talk to you guys later.